The major indices extending their double-digit losses from record highs, including a more than 29 percent decline for the Nasdaq, Jim. And that mix of everything from consumer discretionary to staples, uh, nowhere to hide. No, there is nowhere to hide. Uh, that I think yesterday was really interesting because, of course, even oil was down. Uh, all I want to point out is, is that there was a moment in time when all we cared about was the tenure. And that time has come and passed, which tells me that that should not have been the focus. The focus should have been uh, the tipping point for when retail had to stop eating or eating inflation. Uh, a lot of the inflation had not been felt or seen, in part because it, it was at a level where it was almost hidden from the consumer. But that, it turned out to be just hidden from the consumer because the companies hadn't reported. So, David, my takeaway is that it's been simmering and simmering and simmering. And it boiled over in March and then really went nuts in April. And it, because the companies don't, didn't report until early May, we just really didn't know how bad inflation was. Mm -hmm. It's much worse than we thought. What about the demand side? Um, are consumers reallocating their spending or so. are they slowing their spending? Well, I think that they're spending at a different place than where we thought they would. So reallocating. Yeah. I mean, look, they're, buy they're buying luggage. Uh, one of the, there was a weird kind of uh, existential moment in the Target call where Brian Cornell says they're buying sunscreen. And now, I mean, I don't want Brian Cornell, serious businessman. But he's, what he's basically saying, I think, by that is they're not doing what we thought they're doing. They are done fixing up their house. Make, Carl makes that point very clear. They're just buying little things now, and they're traveling, luggage. So what people are doing is doing something that we should have, I think, maybe presumed, which is that they're seeing the world. They're doing things with their lives because they've been locked down. They're not trying to spend even more time at home. They want to get on the road. Phil LeBeau would certainly tell you that, too. And anyone who's flown knows that, that you can just add a zero to wherever you go with, with the airline tickets. You mean the fare? Oh, and people will just, pay it? I mean, it, I think it, there's still not demand destruction there because people are just so happy to get away. Uh, and they use Airbnb, so you, it's not like you're getting caught with a hotel. But I, I am just shocked at the number of people who were... Uh, misjudged. People wanted to go away, and where they go does not add up to retail. They just aren't. They're off the. They're off the. the they're not going in the aisles. I mean, unless you have a contractor who's trying to finish the project that started All right. during it. Well, Jim, when, the, when this week began, you and I were together on Monday, I believe it was. I think so I've seen you a couple times this month. <laughs> I think so. I think we've all been together maybe once this no. month, but it's good to be back, all three of us on the set. Um, but when we were here on Monday, uh, you talked about these retail earnings being key, without yes. a doubt. Yes. And now we're through most of the well, big I, ones. Well, I didn't know they'd so, be this bad. All right. But what is the takeaway for how you approach the market at this point? Obviously, a market that is going to be down yet again after a very poor day for the S&P that you can see right there yesterday. Uh, and, you know, market sentiment, we can all talk a lot about that, okay, what well, the end game for the Fed is and the fact that nobody's going to buy until they know. But what does this retail reporting period tell you in terms of it your It tells approach? me that, that as much as I like Jay Powell, he is so off the mark here. What, what do you mean? You love Jay Powell. You've been singing his praises. Of late, I've been in the Bullard camp. And you know that. Oh, no, that's right. You haven't been around. <laughs> How much so only you have I been in the like board camp? Father. Have I been Dad, in the Dad, where the hell you been, Dad? You're never been, around. You yeah, around the yeah. in the cradle? Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> well, I've been busy, I, my man. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Johnny O. Um, look, I think that it's very important to recognize. I think Bullard's been right. I th Esther George is talking. We're talking about 50. I mean, what the lesson of this is is, Holy cow, things are so much more out of control than we thought. So I have to, I've been in the board. Do I love Jay Powell? I've been, I think Jay Powell was doing a good job. I think he was concerned as much as, as she that maybe Omicron was going to be really horrible. He misjudged that, but he's not a public health official. But we have a guy named Bullard. Bullard is very sane. We need to shock the system. We need to bring things down right now. The only commodity that I know that is down and in half chicken wings. A meaningful deflation. Uh, you talked to Wing last night, right? 
Really incredible. We, got, we finally got some deflation yeah. in chicken wings. But you know what's so bad? My wife and I came home. We ate them. <laughs> Everyone's cutting back. Cutting back on what? Their chicken wings? Oh, I ate chicken wings for dinner. Oh, you're cutting back. Not the breast, just, just, just the wings. Well, no, I'm just saying that the chicken wings were surprisingly good. And I was just shocked that they were half the price of what they were. And everything else is much more than what it was. It's the only commodity I can find that's down versus, say, gasoline. It's just told you in the state of Washington, is a, you don't have enough digits 